Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to talk to you about annuities in this video. We're actually going to focus on a particular type of annuity in this video called an ordinary annuity, where we make regular fixed payments to an account at the end of each period. So say at the end of every month or every quarter. That's going to be different than something called an annuity due, where payments are made at the beginning of each period. So just know that in this video we're talking about an ordinary annuity where payments are at the end of each period. There are two main types we want to discuss in this video. One of them is called future value of an annuity, and the other one is called the present value of an annuity. For the future value of annuity, basically we're calculating total value of payments working towards some future date with interest. So you imagine if I'm paying monthly into some account that is accumulating value until a retirement date, then it's that future value that I'm interested in with the interest along with my payments. A present value annuity, the value is calculated now, so let's say I want to purchase something now for an amount of more than what I have, and I'm going to be making payments later on based on this current day value with interest. Some examples you might see of both, obviously, a retirement type of account would be a good example of a future value annuity, whereas if we're purchasing a car or a house, we have a certain price those are being sold for today, and we're going to pay those off over the term of the loan in the future. Both of these types of annuities have similar yet very different formulas. So the one that starts with in our version here, S equals is going to be our future value annuity. The one that starts with P equals is our present value annuity formula. Our capital R here in both of these is the amount of the regular payment. So if that's a monthly payment or a quarterly payment, etc., the capital R represents that. Here our formula is going to look a bit different than a formula you might see off of a website or in a textbook. We are writing it here based on the assumption that maybe you're arriving in this video having done something like simple or compound interest before, and we don't want to move around and call things I and M and change what our lowercase r means just to do these formulas. So we're going to give these formulas to you a bit differently. Here we have something like R over N as the interest per pay period, where you might see other formulas that just call it I, but we're used to seeing R over N in the compound interest formula that we might have worked with before now. So we went ahead and left R over N as our interest per period amount in these formulas. Also, you'll notice here n times t is the number of payments made that we're used to from compound interest formula. Same thing over here, although in our exponent with the present value annuity formula, we have a negative nt as our exponent. Let's look at a couple of examples of each here. So if we pay $750 into an account at the end of each quarter, so every three months, four times a year, and the account is compounded quarterly, so also every three months, four times a year, and it's compounded at an interest rate of 5% annually, what is the future value of this annuity in 45 years? Okay, so we have a few things that we wanna notice. First of all, it's future value, we're saving towards some point in the future in this account by making regular payments. And so we'll be using the future value formula. A couple of things we'll want to note. We're paying $750 into an account at the end of each quarter. That's our regular payment. So here we know that our capital R is going to be $750. Okay. At the end of each quarter, that tells us how many times per year we're compounding. So that tells us that our lowercase n here is going to equal 4. We're compounding and paying in 4 times per year. The account is compounded quarterly at 5%, so that tells us that our lowercase r, our rate, is going to be 0 0.05 as a decimal when we plug in 5% into our formula. What is the future value of this annuity in 45 years also tells us that time is 45 years. So we should be able to plug in r and lowercase r and lowercase n and t and be able to just simply solve for s. So in this problem we would say s, our future value, because future value starts with s, right? Sure. 750 times our big quantity here, start the parentheses, 1 plus my rate, which is 0.05, over n, which is 4, because quarterly. Now n times t, I have 4 times per year and 45 years, and n times t, remember, is always going to just be the total number of payments, but 4 times 45 gives us 180, minus 1, and then we have r over n, which is the same fraction we had in here. So over 0 0.05 divided by 4. And we'll close our brackets. 
Now, if you feel comfortable typing all of this into a scientific or graphing calculator all in one go, that's great. Go ahead and do that. What we might recommend, though, is first doing something like type in this here and maybe go ahead and hit enter and then take that answer you get in the calculator and then divide by your 0.05 over 4. You'll need to put that in parentheses if you divide by that. And then lastly, perhaps multiply what you get by 750. So you may want to take it one step at a time. And if you do that, and I'm going to go ahead and work in uh, United States dollars here and round to two places for cents. 500 and 1,000, so over half a million, 380. And if we round, we will get 7 cents on top of that. Let's look at a super similar example. Now I'm paying in $250 at the end of each month, and the account is compounded monthly at the same rate of 5%, and we want to know what is the future value of the annuity in 45 years. Now, as far as I'm concerned and putting money in over the 45 years, I'm actually putting in the same amount, because if you think about putting in $250 every month, each quarter would be every three months, right? And so if I multiplied this amount by three, that would be 750, every three months, which was the last example that we just did, right? So here I'm really contributing the same amount, but this time I'm contributing a third as much every month, so it's really the same thing. Let's look at what happens. Is there a difference? So in this one here, my regular payments are actually 250 now. I am putting those in every month, so that tells me that my N is now 12. My account is compounded monthly also. 5% is still our rate, so our R, lowercase, is still 0.05. And then our future value in 45 years still gives us a T of 45. All right, so let's go ahead and plug all of this into our formula and see what we get. So we get S is equal to our regular payment of 250. And inside our brackets on the top, we'll have 1 plus the rate over the number of times per year, so 0 0.05. This time divide 12, because it's monthly and not quarterly. And now n times t, if we take 12 times 45, that actually gives us a total of 540 payments, n times t, minus 1 to finish off the top of the fraction, and then r over n again in the bottom would be 0 0.05 divided by 12. And that's the end of our brackets there. Okay, if we feel like doing a similar thing, typing it all in at once, great. Otherwise, I would say type in your numerator here, hit enter, get an answer for that, divide by your denominator here, get a second answer, then take all of that and multiply by 250 and do it in small steps. If we type it all in correctly, we should get an answer of 500 and 6,000, so a little bit different here, right? Six hundred and nine dollars and thirty two cents. So you'll notice here what we got was 506, 609 and some change versus 501, 380 and some change. So it actually turns out if we contribute total the same amount, but we break it up into smaller payments and contribute that amount more often, then we're actually going to end up with additional interest due to the compounding. So that's a little additional lesson to be learned here, I guess, with annuities and contributing regular payments. Let's look at a present value problem. Let's say we purchase a car and we take on a five-year loan for $21,000, whether that's the entire purchase price of the car or maybe we made a down payment to get the loan down to $21,000. But we take a five-year loan, $21,000. It's compounded monthly. And the interest rate that we're paying on this car loan is 6.9%. We want to know what are the monthly payments. So you think about what's going on here. We're not actually solving for the total value of the car. We are actually, in this one, solving for the monthly payments, which means we're solving for capital R, right? The regular payment. So what we'll need to do is figure out everything else. So if we look through here and we purchase a car loan and take on a five-year monthly loan, five-year monthly loan tells us a couple of things. It tells us that we're paying monthly. And it also tells us 5 times 12, right, means that our n times t is going to be 60. So our exponent is actually negative 60 there. Now, our rate is 6.9%. 
So our R is 0 0.069, and that will take care of everything over here. What we'll need to solve for R additionally that we didn't have last time though, we'll actually need the present value. And when we buy the car, it's worth 21,000, right? Now it's going to depreciate instantly as soon as we drive it away, probably, especially if it's a new vehicle. But 21,000 is our present value in this circumstance. So what we'll be setting up is actually 21,000 is equal to R, which is what we're solving for, times, notice a little bit different formula here, so we have one minus, then we start our compound looking thing here, right? One plus R over N, which will be 0 0.069 over 12, because monthly. Negative NT, we said, was going to be negative 60 here in this case. And then again, we have R over N in the denominator, so 0 0.069 divide 12 here as well. Now you'll notice that we don't have r by itself on one side of the equation. So what will I need to do to solve for r to get r by itself? Well, I'll need to divide both sides by all the stuff in the brackets, right? So I need to do that on both sides. So let's go ahead and maybe rewrite down what that is. So that means r is actually going to equal the 21,000 divided by all the stuff in the brackets, right? Divided by this one minus quantity 1 plus 0 0.069 over 12 to the negative 60 and then divide by that 0 0.069 divide 12 again. So what I would recommend is don't do your 21,000 first. I would do the same order. I would say go ahead and do your numerator first, get all that in there, then divide it by your 0 0.069 divide 12 then once you have that answer, take 21,000 and divide by what you just got, and then you should be able to get your monthly payment. Now when you do this, you want to make sure you're using unrounded versions. If you're going one step at a time, you don't want to type this in and round, and then divide and then round, and then 21,000 and then round, because you may be getting farther and farther from the actual value of the payment. right? So if we do that unrounded, at each step in our calculator, then we should get, if we round the final answer to two places, we should get a monthly payment of $414.84. Let's look at one additional here. We're taking on a 30-year home mortgage. Mortgage is just the house word for loan. So we're taking out a 30-year home loan for $175,000. It's compounded monthly. And the rate it's compounded at is 3.75%. We want to know what the monthly payments are on the principal and interest. We've additionally specified principal and interest here. It's possible when you get a home loan, you have a mortgage for a house, the bank may also require you to not only pay them the what you owe plus interest, but you may also at the same time have to pay into some other account, which they call an escrow account, things like you know taxes ahead of time, or you may have to pay homeowners association dues or insurance. So we're just talking about the principal and interest, just this part of the loan, nothing extra that goes along with it many times with a house. So here again, you notice we're solving for the monthly payments. So we're going to go ahead and solve for R again, our regular payments. 30-year home loan tells me that T is equal to 30, and $175,000 is my P, so we'll go ahead and make a note of that. We're compounding monthly, so that says N is equal to 12, and 3.75% would mean that our rate is actually 0 0.0375. Remember to move two places to the left when converting to decimal. We want to know what the monthly payments are. We should be able to plug everything in as well. Now we're solving for R again, so remember we'll have to do that whole divide by the brackets thing. Let's go ahead and set this up just as it's written in the formula. We have 175,000 as our present value equal to R, which is the regular payment. And we have in the brackets one minus one plus our rate, which is 0 0.0375 over, I don't write the leading zero when I write R in these. It tends to just take up extra space. Do you forgive me? Do you do that as well? Maybe you do that as well. So negative n times t, if we take n times t, then we're actually going to get negative 360. There would be 360 monthly payments on a 30-year mortgage. That's a lot of payments, isn't it? And then over our R over n, again, so over 0 0.0375 divide 12.
Okay, now remember we'll have to divide both sides by all the stuff in the brackets here, right, to get r by itself on one side of the equal sign. So what we'll end up with here is that r is equal to, and what we'll type into the calculator, 175,000 over our brackets, which is 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.0375 over 12 to the negative 360 and all that stuff there over 0.0375 divide 12. Okay, again, I would recommend do this numerator here, then divide by this denominator, and then take 175,000 and divide by everything that you got. Remember not to round at each step. If we type all of that into the calculator correctly and only round at the very end, then we should get principal plus interest, the payment on just that, each month would be $810.45. Okay, everyone, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use the future value of an annuity and present value of an annuity formula, how to plug in, how to solve maybe for your future value, how to solve for monthly payments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.